Hello, what the L is going on? I'll tell you what the L is going on. We're going to be talking about, well, all sorts of words beginning with L in our dictionary of voice, our A to Z of voiceover terms. There may be technical terms, there may be studio terms, there may be kind of biological terms as well, ones which actually pertain to the human body and how you talk, how you breathe, how you sit. A whole host have been coming away over the last several days. More to come as well as we lurch headlong to episode 1000. Only a few short days away. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Welcome to today's show. Peter Stewart in real life. Tweeter Stewart on Twitter. T W W E T E R S T E W A R T. Check me out on LinkedIn. Peter Stewart UK. And also Peter Stewart. I have an Amazon author page as well. If you want to check out some of the other uh, goodies that I've got when I've been talking and writing about voiceovers. In regards of radio and TV presentation, that kind of thing, in my various books on broadcast and media. So today, here we go, quite a few, quite a lot to get through. So most of them are to do with your speaking muscles as well. Labiodental puts it, uh, is the the one that starts it all off today. Labiodental. Now, labio or labio, whichever way you want to say it, has obviously got something to do with lips. Yeah, we know the reasons behind that. Let's not go into it now. Dental has got to do with mouth and specifically teeth. That's pretty obvious as well. So labio or labiodental. Well, very few sounds use the sound created when the upper teeth rest on the lower lip. Now, I've done this a few times. So, what sound is created when the upper teeth rest on the lower lip? Do it yourself and try and work out what the what the the sound combination is, what the letter combination is that is produced when you do that. Okay, upper teeth, lower lip. Mm, what about very few I gave you a clue because I actually said a few moments ago, didn't I? Very few sounds use. Very and few are the two that you will hear. Labiodental. Laryngology or laryngology, whichever way you want to say it again, whether that hard G or the soft one, the study of the professional voice. So an ENT, an ear, nose and throat expert is not a laryngologist. Uh, They can give you sophisticated diagnosis and treatment of voice disorders. So if you've got a problem with your voice, yeah, your GP, your general practitioner, your high street doctor, probably the first port of call rather than Dr. Google. Uh, But then maybe you need to ask and you're listening out for the word laryngologist that that doctor may use on your behalf. Laryngoscope or laryngoscopy is the process of using... Oh, now this makes me squirm a little bit. I've never had it done, but oh, no, not nice. Uh, The process of using a flexible scope in your nose or a rigid scope in your mouth to see your larynx. So why might they be going down there? Frankly, to see whether there's something wrong with it. Maybe you've got a bit of scarred tissue. Maybe you've got a cyst growing or something like that. And uh, it's the best way to have a little look. Fortunately, that kind of thing has not happened to me. I think I'd probably need a general anaesthetic. I'm a bit squeamish when it comes to that kind of thing. So uh, and and so a, a laryngoscopy or a laryngoscopy is the process of using that particular uh, flexible microscope, if you like, to see what's going on down there uh, near your larynx. Uh, the larynx is another word connecting the trachea commonly called the windpipe and the pharynx again we've spoken about this before that's the area between the mouth and the nose and that area is the location of the vocal folds of course lingua alveola well lingua is uh, all to do with speech and language of course lingua alveola a l v e o l a r so again, I'll, I'll, I'll describe what it is, and if you do the action as well, and try and work out what sound combination is usually determined from this process of moving your tongue and your lips and your teeth and so on. The speech sound created when the tip of the tongue, the lingua, is against the upper gum ridge, the alveolus. So the tip of the tongue against the upper gum ridge. Okay, I've given you another clue because ironically it's the very prevalent sound in the phrase tip of the tongue. Tip of the tongue, yeah? You're moving the tip of your tongue 
to the uh, to the front of your mouth, just behind the front upper teeth, the tip of your tongue, and and it's obviously not heard much in those that speak with a glottal stop in words like butter, yeah, because they're not saying butter. Uh, again, uh, we spoke about the glottal stop a couple of three days ago. So that is lingua alveola. What about lingua palatal? Lingua palatal is a really rare sound when you say R noises, such as in really rare, when the tip of the tongue nearly touches the roof of your mouth. Really rare. Yeah, do that really slowly and you'll notice that your tongue curls back really tightly towards the back of your mouth it doesn't actually touch the roof of your mouth and it helps you pronounce those r sounds finally today lingua velar lingua velar v e l a r if you've done phonics with your child you'll be familiar with the kicking k and this is how you make that kicking k sound with the back of the tongue up against the soft palate at the back of the roof of your mouth and the tip of the tongue on the mouth floor. It's funny, isn't it, when you give a description and a direction like that for something that we do almost without thinking, and then you think to yourself, oh, is, that, is, is, is that what I do? When you're speaking 19 to the dozen when you're really excited and your mouth darting all over your mouth in combination with your with your lips, with your cheeks as well. We don't often speak about cheeks when it comes to the movement, but of course it is the muscles in your cheek which help move the lips as well and give space for your tongue to move as your mouth opens. So let me go through that again. The kicking K sound, the back of the tongue up against the soft palate at the back of the roof of the mouth as opposed to the R sound where you're curling the tip of your tongue back. And you've got the tip of the tongue in this particular case on the mouth floor. So do the K sound, the K sound, and then do the R sound and you'll notice what the difference is, the K and the R. And also you'll notice that potentially, depending on what your accent is, how you're brought up uh, and, uh, and, and, and how you speak, and this is no direction at all uh, and, and certainly not a criticism, but your, your, your mouth, your lips may slightly change as well, maybe to give a slightly different resonant sound. So you may be playing around with that as well between the K and the R sounds. Okay, that's it for today. It's quite fun, isn't it? I love doing these. Love them. Uh, tomorrow, we move on to the M's, as you might expect. We've got just a couple to talk about tomorrow. It's just the how the way the cookie crumbles. M tomorrow, M the day after, on Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Voice Over Voice. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.